Nice FCK Himalaya. What's up people? Today we'll be taking a look at the new IM single dynamic driver from Nice FCK. It's called the Himalaya and it's what they call flagship titanium alloy cavity dynamic earphone. What a mouthful, am I right? Um, anyway, um, let's get started because we have a lot to talk about. This is how or what everything it comes with. You get your nice case as you can see it's very nice size in my opinion a lot of room to put some ear tips and one of these adapters and a brush and even a dongle no problem here you get your im which i will get to in just a second you, you get these um removable termination plugs you get actually 2.5 and 3.5 uh, this is the three this is the two uh, i'm surprised they included a 2.5 actually it's kind of nice i'm surprised it hasn't died yet uh, i still use it to be honest in some equipment you get a nice brush remove like clean your ims remove some of the wax and so on and you get these tuning nozzles which i will be talking about in the end of the review because they do change the sound and actually they do change it drastically uh, one of them changes it drastically. The other one is not so much. Um, for this review purposes, I will be doing the review based on the stock or default nozzle, which is gold colored. You get these ear tips, you get like six pairs, and then you have one installed by default. The pairs are, uh, some of them is not, I, I don't know if it's like white bore, I don't think so. It's like kind of wider than the tighter one here. The left side here, you can see it's harder to the touch. They're not as flexible. And the ones here on the right side, they are lighter, lighter colored and they are treble enhancing, I think. And they are very light and soft to the touch compared to the stronger ones here, which I think maybe are best suited for bass. I'm not sure, I actually, like I don't prefer these ear tips. Uh, I used my own. Uh, something like the Duno SNS tips and the render tips and velvet tips and final E tips. These usually final are the best when I try to use silicon. Now, getting to the IMs themselves, as you can see here, let's start with the cable first. I want to show you, of course, nice FCK being a cable manufacturer, uh, first and foremost, they have excelled and exceeded my expectations for what a quality cable should look and perform like. As you can see here, this cable, very soft to the touch, very flexible, you can move it in every way, and yet it never ever tangles. Like you can check this out, like I can wrap it around itself like that and the moment I leave it, it's perfectly flat. It gives a very nice view when you put it into your amp and it's just kind of spread out like that on your desk. And when you put it into your DAP and the, the cable just runs to your ears in a very nice way, not tangled, never gets tangled in your clothes or anything like that. Like th that's, that's how, in my opinion, a well-designed cable should perform and look like. I, I always like it flat on my desk. Uh, speaking of the termination plugs, they are the type that you have to unscrew and screw like so. They come right off and then you can remove it. And then when you finish, you just kind of screw it back on. I think it gives me a sense of security. And I like this kind of like sturdy system where I feel it will not come off by accident uh, as some other um, cables do have this kind of system. I still prefer the Duno a Q lock system. I think it's uh, better and easier to remove and just way more sturdy. But this one, I think it performs almost exactly the same, gives you the same function, which I kind of love. Um, let's take one of the earpieces off. I want to give you a closer look here. Now they made this out of a titanium alloy, not out of pure titanium. First of all, I think being out of pure titanium at this size will be like insanely expensive. And second, and more, most importantly, um, I think uh, titanium has a disadvantage of it's very easy to scratch. Now, if you have a, an earpiece that easily scratch, it will look very bad. Now, if it's on a dongle or something, maybe you will in, wouldn't notice. But for an IM and especially at a price like this, I don't think that's kind of fair. So it's very smart that they did this out of a titanium alloy. Giving you another benefit actually is not only does it have a matte finish, as you can see, it's actually not, it's not a fingerprint magnet. Now you can see here, I can put my 
finger and do like a lot and still it is very shiny doesn't have any fingerprints at all i gotta say it's even better than the macbook <laughs> right um you get like two vents here you can see this is one and this is two let me take this ear tip off and this is the gold nozzle it is on the short side but actually let me remember quickly i want to measure the weight i want to show you guys the weight because it is here let's see how much weight this is the right side no ear tip let's see how much it weighs it is 12.3 grams uh that is on the heavier side of things but to be completely honest, I didn't feel it, and I will speak about that in a second. As you can see here, the nozzle diameter measurement on the widest part, the outer edge, is kind of like 5.8 to 5.9, which is, again, okay. It's not, like, really big. It's very comfortable. Now, this is the weight and, and the nozzle diameter measurement, which begs the question, how does it feel? What is the comfort like? I will tell you straight on. Although this is heavy according to the measurements we have seen, to my ears, it was not heavy at all. It's actually felt very comfortable because as you can see, the size of this IM is kind of like on the small side of things, especially if you look at it from the side. And there is like the ergonomic design, which makes the IM actually sits in your ear. You can even feel and see me when I hold it with three fingers. It actually has a place for this finger, a place for this finger, and a place for this finger like so. So it is designed in a very ergonomic and comfortable way. Honestly, again, the weight measurements say it's heavy, but I will tell you with all honesty, in my ears, I have never felt them because most of the weight is inside the ear. It never gets out. You can actually put your hand against your ear. It's kind of flat. So now we have talking about that let me first before i describe the sound i just want to take a note and say that the passive sound isolation of this earphone or in-ear monitor is above average again i said the nozzles are kind of short you can have a look here and it kind of sits more inside of your ear when you use um, a matching ear tip that that is like your size it sits most of the weight is distributed inside your ear and it kind of like sits comfortably without any discomfort and the isolation that happens because of that is superb and I, I will say it is above average when I compare it to other wired IMs it has a very good seal when you use the correct size of ear tips and it sits well within your ears now I as I said, I will be talking about the gold nozzle and let me start by saying the base. Let's talk about the sub base and base. Sub base, I will lump it up when I talk about the base because I think they are both okay. And the sub base doesn't stand out or anything like that, that I should mention it. I will say the base here is superb. Let me start by that. Uh, a benefit of the excellent dynamic driver that is included. This is the base I would love to hear from IEMs. How does it sound, a tech review? Well, it sounds very clean, clear, detailed with, um, how could I say that? It, the sub bass has a very nice rumble. That's number one. And number two, the bass is very fast, very punchy, clean and snappy and visceral. Like it has that sense of the meaty bass that we love to hear, you know? It has no weight behind it. It has um, a sense of, how can I say, like dynamic, a depth to it. Uh, it is layered and textured and beautiful. That is how I would describe the bass. It is actually at the right amount. It's not overdone. It's not not done or like, like you face like a bass roll off or something like that. No, it's actually the right amount and it's actually wonderful, like truly impressive. It's not a bassy IM, nothing of the sort at all. It's actually the right amount like that you want to hear in your IMs. Do I dare and call it neutral? Absolutely. Like maybe, maybe slight boost, maybe slight boost. I think it's the Harman type of bass. Um, very well done, honestly, truly impressive. And this is one of the benefits of dynamic drivers. Uh, especially now we have single dynamic drivers. This gives you other benefits, not only in the bass and the other uh, frequencies of the sound spectrum, such as 
you have zero phase issues, I mean, zero phase distortion, and so on. Not our topic for today, but anyway, you get that point. Um, moving on to the mid range, we will start with the lower mids. Now, this part is very good, no problem here at all. Um, it has actually a lot of benefit from the bass. The bass doesn't cut off early or anything like that. It moves on to the earlier uh, or lower mid range and it gives a lot of nice boost to the lower mids, meaning that it gives it a lot of warmth, a lot of weight to the notes, a lot of um, like bassiness or warmth, you could say, to the male vocals they sound like really heavy really detailed really clear the standout feature here for this im other than for me personally is the quality bass um is the lower mid-range and the upper mid-range the mid-range as a whole is very forward and very clear and very detailed in this im but it's not really that great in the upper mid-range i'll talk about it in a second but the lower mid-range, as I said, you feel everything is very forward, more than usual. And it's actually sometimes way too forward. And there's a lot of weight in the male uh, vocals, a lot of weight in the notes, a lot of heaviness and warmth that gives that balance to the upper mid-range. Moving on to the upper mid-range, this is where this IM could be split into two. Like my opinion is swinging between two on some tracks. It sounds wonderful. The female vocals, the upper mid-range, it sounds detailed, clear, way too clear, way too clear, honestly. It's like really like super detailed. Um, the details are actually in your face, like the vocals are very intimate and it seems like everything is here as a music, if the music is here, like everything is here as a vocals, as a mid-range, we get your male vocals, your female vocals are right here. And the rest of the sound spectrum is here on the side. It's like sitting here, which is like a very peculiar uh, sound signature, to be honest. Uh, I don't know like how they designed this. There is a lot of sound stage. I will get to that in a moment, but the sound, like especially the vocals on the mid-range are very intimate, are very next to your ear. And the sound, the rest of the sounds are very far away. A very interesting observation, to be honest. It's very good sometimes, yet on the other hand, sometimes I felt it's done maybe, maybe just slightly too much. Maybe a tad, just a touch, a touch, just a touch too much. Um, why do I say just slightly? Because I appreciate vocal forward sound signatures and I feel it sounds wonderful to be honest, but maybe, you know, like the area from two to four K it's done way too much sometimes like here, it's not too much, but just slightly much that it gives sometimes on some tracks, it makes them seem or feel bright. It makes it seem not thin. I wouldn't say thin, like they balanced out the lower mid range very well here. That's why the bass carries over to some of the lower mid range. It's not a bleed, but it gives the warmth. And it's balanced here by the upper mid range. Instead of being thin, it sounds just too clear, too detailed more than necessary. And sometimes I will be completely honest. Sometimes there is a sibilance, but it's not harsh, which is crazy. The sibilance is there. The S letter is over emphasized in some tracks, in some vocals, but it's not harsh. I don't know how they did that. I promise you, I'm telling you exactly what I heard. It's not harsh, but you can feel it's sibilant. By sibilance, I mean, it doesn't sound natural. You don't hear the S clearly. You hear these like that. Sometimes when someone is over emphasizing the S letter, yet at the same time, the level of detail and clarity here on some tracks is breathtaking. Spe specifically, I will tell you, acoustic instruments. I mean, if there is an acoustic guitar or like, for example, specifically a steel acoustic guitar, you can hear, do you know when you can hear the strings and you know they're steel? Do you know that kind of sound here? It's like clear. It's like, you know, you're watching HDR or a perfectly saturated image with like vivid colors. You hear it here, it's like you can hear the guitar strings and you hear the metal of the guitar strings and it's right next to your ear. 
and oh my god oh my god next to the vocals it is wonderful a wonderful sound and it's way too detailed like that another thing i want to mention is electric guitars and overdriven guitars wow the sound is hyper detailed this is how i would describe the sound it is hyper detailed but as i said again to be honest sometimes it could get too much it doesn't feel harsh or anything but i feel it is way too much like speaking of the balance of the sound signature it is done way too much like it is up to forward way too forward um this shouldn't be a problem because they have included tuning nozzles now thankfully this is included to allow you to play although i like the default nozzle to be honest the most um using foam ear tips this actually alleviated a lot of the feelings i got from the two bright vocals that i heard with this i am but again like maybe sometimes i don't want to use foam ear tips a lot so with that said did i find it like harsh or um i'm not going to listen to it or anything like that absolutely not but for some intensive drumming tracks like i used to enjoy the cymbals and the hi-hat strikes but at the same time if the track got busy i felt or like if there's like screaming vocals i feel this is not for it using jazz using pop music using like classical music i never detected any problem and it was breathtaking honestly breathtaking uh moving on to the treble here again i think the treble here is done in two ways the lower treble is very detailed hyper detailed which does something very interesting to the imaging and for the upper treble i think it has a lot of air a lot of space a lot of a lot of that sizziness and like brilliance and the sizzle in the sound is done in a way that makes it like sparkly that's how i describe it it's very sparkly it's very clean it's very clear it's very it's very airy uh if you combine that with the upper mid-range i talked about you kind of feel why i say the upper mid-range is maybe done a tad too much because if you usually have the upper treble like that with normal or clear lower treble you usually like the sound signature is better or prefer to be to be having a just lower mid-range upper mid-range uh but here they're done just i think it's just at the edge like if i would describe the upper mid-range i would describe it perfectly as saying edgy that's how i would describe it it's just on the edge like some tracks could push it too far and yet some tracks do not uh and for paying that price you get a level of detail that you would never get otherwise that is about the treble um it's not a secret now for the technicalities and detail retrieval or and or micro details also the this i am performs way above average for this price range the level of detail that this driver offers is way more than you get for this price range it's way way up like this driver is really a quality driver and you can sense that by the level of detail it offers the level of technicalities the lack of sharpness and the excellent bass and transients which are so fast and snappy that you get the overall cohesiveness of the sound and the balanced nature of it is what makes a single dynamic driver actually worth it um now i want to take a moment to speak about the imaging accuracy here because here two things combine the sound stage i will speak about it in a second is actually very wide again more than normal ims and more than this sound uh, or this price range you can get at um the imaging accuracy is very very detailed very accurate you can get like very accurate positional accuracy when you listen to it more than usual part of that is because of the high treble uh the clarity on the upper treble and also i think because of the vocal forwardness and the two to four k area the upper and lower mid-range is actually done tastefully and it gives you like if you can hear the vocals you can hear them very well they're very forward so you can actually pinpoint it with greater accuracy because the treble is kind of helping in a way and 
let me also take a moment to say that this is amazing with the soundstage. Like the soundstage is wider than usual. Again, I don't know like how they did that because there is a balance, as I said, the vocals are intimate and centric, but they move around in the field of the soundstage and the, everything else is, is here. The treble is here, the bass is here. So it kind of feels like you can judge things like in a very nice way, at least from the height and width, like, like parameters, you can describe it very accurately. Again, more than any I am in this price range I've ever heard. Um, that's actually very surprising for me. I didn't expect that from a single dynamic driver because I thought like, why does it cost this price? But the level of detail and quality, even in the base, you cannot find that in something like this. Moving on to the timbre and the uh, tonal character of this IM, I would say, honestly, this has a very natural, uh, real life tonality and timbre to it. Uh, except sometimes, as I said, the upper mid range I can never say it's shouty. It is not shouty. And to be honest, you can never hear that. But as I said, sometimes when the S sound is kind of changed, sometimes when there is small sibilances in the sound, I wouldn't be able to call it natural, but everything else is natural. And with many cracks, it sounds natural. Um, actually, not only does it sound natural, it sounds very clear, which makes the overall sound signature of this IM, I would describe it as very good bass, uh, hyper detailed, ex extremely detailed IM, uh, with a lot of air, with a lot of treble, uh, not sharp, but with uh, an emphasis on the upper mid range. That's how I would describe the sound signature. Uh, warm vocals, lush vocals, very rich vocals with a very good bass, um, an emphasis and a boost on the upper mid range. <coughs> and a very airy treble and a very hyper detailed sound signature. Um, it's actually not sharp, to be completely honest. It's actually not sharp at all to my ears. As I said, just it's just done too much that changes the sound of the upper mid range. It's way too forward, way too clear, way too bright and just edgy. It's at the edge. It's not sharp at all. It's just at the edge. For amplification and um, amplifier requirements and power requirements, it is extremely sensitive, more than usual. No hiss with anything I've heard or anything like that, but it is very sensitive. Like I usually found myself lowering the volume more than usual on many easy dongles that I use or something like a PTR7, volume is less than half uh, when using the balance. Um, it is very easy to drive. Again, something that is awesome for this IAM. Now let's move on to talk about these nozzles. Now I've been spending a lot of time, man, a lot of time comparing these nozzles for you guys because I had to listen to it myself because the graphs don't say everything. If you want to see how the nozzles change the sound, you can visit atechreviews.squig.link. I have measured them all using the same ear tip, in the same environment and the same conditions. And you can see what changes exactly. Now you have here a blue nozzle. I will tell you what the graphs show and I will maybe, if I have time, I will add a picture. And then later, actually, I will tell you at the same time how I perceive the differences because some things the graph, graph doesn't tell you. Uh, the blue nozzle, they say, it's bass enhancing. In my personal opinion, it didn't enhance any bass. I'm telling you straight up, didn't enhance any bass. Yet on the other hand, you can see from the graph that the part actually from 2K to 13K, there is like, it is much lower than it usually is. Um, to my ears, I don't know why they included it. Just That's just my opinion, guys. Like to my ears, the blue one removed all the magic from this IM. The clarity is gone. The vocal forwardness is way gone. It's actually became a laid back sound signature. I wouldn't call it recessed, honestly, but it became way laid back. They're not shining or in the forefront anymore. And the treble, it just disappeared. You know, all the clarity and sizzle I was talking about is actually gone. 
and it became just actually not impressive. I will tell you that sound stage and imaging went out of the window. Um, again, that's just my opinion. Maybe it's just my ears. I don't know. I'm telling you what I heard. Now, I here also tried the gray nozzles. Now, you might look at the graph and you will say, oh, the difference is nothing on the graph, the gray nozzles. They say it's, it's in treble enhancing, but if you look at the graph, you don't see like much enhancement. Yet at the same time, although they look the same, to my ears, again, the gray one, I didn't like it at all. Like, again, it affected the sound stage, it affected the imaging and positional accuracy. It affected some of the clarity. I don't know why or how. I, I really guys can't explain it for you. The graphs don't show it, but to my ears, I felt, wow, the magic is gone again. Like, where is that clarity? Where's that hyper detail I'm talking about? Where's that excellent detail retrieval from this IM? I didn't find it when I used the gray nozzles. And again, I don't know why they include it, to be honest. Um, that's just my personal opinion. Maybe it's just people prefer to do that. But the change with the blue nozzle is drastic, is drastic change. It's not a normal change. Um, and if you can see here, guys, if I take this nozzle off here, you can actually see the driver right in. Like it's like way, like see, you can see the, the, the magnet or, or the diaphragm. Can't really see it that much here on the phone. But I will take a few pictures and post them. Maybe I will use a macro lens to get you guys to see the difference here. Um, I don't know, like the difference is huge with the blue one and it's not a good change for my opinion. I mean, I would understand completely if they just pulled back the upper mid range, that would make a lot of sense. But I understand like this was done um, and maybe because it's a single dynamic, maybe like if you bring one frequency down, you bring others down. I'm not sure. It's not It's not a hybrid. It's not a multi-driver BAIM where maybe you can tune that with greater accuracy. This is actually one of the benefits of multiple driver IMs. Um, but anyway, this is my experience. Um, I found the best sounding nozzle is the golden nozzle, provided the best sound stage, best imaging accuracy and best detail. Uh, it took a lot of time, actually, I don't know who will, who will do that and keep listening and changing nozzles, but it's my preference to use one nozzle and not change it. I just used it to tell you guys the differences and measure it. Um, that's it. Quickly, for a minute, I will compare the only IM I have that lies in this price range or around it, which is the normal um, Moondrop Blessing 2, not the Dusk. And how will I compare something like the nice hck himalaya with the moondrop blessing too now you can compare the graphs also and look at them but i think some things will not be in the graph and it came actually as a surprise to me i will tell you first of all the base the base here uh let's talk put them side by side you can see obviously the titanium shell is number one this is the number one difference and here you can see the resin shell is number two difference of course uh, you get a difference on the cable the Himalaya has a much better higher quality cable the blessing 2 doesn't the interchangeable termination plugs and so on um, the tuning nozzles are also included in this first comparison now other than that, let's talk about the base. Although they look the same on the graph, I, th I feel the base here is much better. It's much, it slams more, it's way more detailed, it's way more textured, it's punchy, it's much better quality. I can't even compare them. Like the titanium Himalaya wins, no questions asked. Moving on to the mid-range, this is where it gets interesting. I wouldn't say I prefer one over the other. Uh, I will say that this has a lot more clarity and detail and it's pushed forward. The Blessing 2 vocals are more balanced with the sound signature. For the treble, this one gets the win here. It's way detailed. It has a lot of clarity, a lot of air, a lot of like brilliance to it. Um, if we compare overall the uh, timbre and the imaging and the soundstage, again, the titanium Himalaya wins. 
Um, in terms of tonality and timbre, I will say the Blessing 2 wins, in my opinion, in only that it is... It has a more pleasing tonality to it. It is a balanced tonality. Nothing stand out, stands out. The bass doesn't stand out. The vocals don't stand out. It's just, you know, comfortable listening, relaxed. You can listen to it and it's, it's okay. Maybe it's sometimes slightly sharp with the 8K, but that's it. Just a small, you know, amount of sharpness here, which you will not get with everything. Most of the time it sounds fine. I think here, this, when I compare them side by side, I was shocked that the Blessing 2 doesn't have the level of detail this one has. And I'm not just talking about the mid-range or the treble. It, it sounds hyper detailed in every way, every sound. Um, it's really interesting and it's, it's something to, to hear, like to see how the industry have improved, has improved with technology, you get a tuning that makes this seem like a not detailed I am, actually. <laughs> Can you imagine? Like this has a lot more detail and I could see both as being useful and pleasing for different people. Again, if I want to hear details and I want to hear clarity, I would pick this one. If I want to listen to it, if I want to listen to something relaxing and laid back, I would listen to this. It's just shocking when you compare them both. So this has been the review of the Himalaya. Nice HCK. It's been a long review. I give it a lot of time. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and let me know if you liked it. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And until next time, stay positive, guys. See ya. Bye.